And, it's, and that's an important community conversation, isn't it? I, you know, I am, as a 55-year-old, um, you know, my dad was a medico, so he looked after himself reasonably well. But, you know, he's a hard-working medico, had a bit of a small heart attack at 53, and he ended up working as a, a doctor till 81, typical country doctor, loved it. But basically, it's fair to say that I would be in more robust health than my, who was in good health at 55. As you probably saw in your local papers, they, made, they spoke a little bit about me coming up here, but your papers seemed far more excited about me winning your Lord Howe Yacht Race last week. And um, <laughs> look, as a 55-year-old, it isn't what you would have done in the previous generation. You know, in my case, I steer a pretty big ocean racing yacht, which is, a, if you're asking, yes, what is a money expert doing with an ocean racing yacht, just go with me on this one. It's like my cardiology mate who smokes. Look, silly things happen. It makes no sense, it just happens. But basically for me to push my boat into the 30, 40 knots of breeze for three days, we had 10 metre waves and one boat got frantic, got lost and you know, didn't lo we lost frantic for two days. Three big boats basically either broke up or didn't sink obviously. Crew was so seasick. I had six of my crew down below once a day to them. It was those horrible bloody race. And it's not what you used to do as a 55 year old. But you need to be insane now. But, um, but basically the, the point here is we're different. And so again, in terms of community conversations, is that when I come to Avoca, and I will do as I start to partially retire, there's a conversation for you, remember? We used to retire at 65. What'd you do for a living? I worked at Westpac for, for 63 of those 65 years or whatever it was in those days. And uh, why'd you retire at 65? Well, I got a gold watch, I got a certificate, and I got $30,000 in super. You know, what are you gonna do with your money? Thinking, doesn't matter much, because when I started giving advice in, the, uh, in 1979, do you know how long a 65-year-old male lived for in 1979? Five years and two months. Five years and two months. Do you know in 1979 what the dominant exciting retirement dream was for a 65-year-old? Gardening. Sorry, gardeners. Look, I don't mind the garden. I could watch the gardener all day. Um, I'll happily fill up divots on the golf course, but I ain't gardening. Sorry. Uh, what my people now, what 65s now tell me is, they go, oh, Paul, we're doing a cooking course. And I go, great, at the local TAFE. They go, no, Italy. Um, we're doing an art appreciation course. And I go, are you get ducking over the gallery in East Gosford? No, 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 no. Matter of fact, we, you know, we're going to Chicago. Um, it, it is really, this is wonderful stuff. It is really, really wonderful community stuff. Now, how our community funds that will be another community conversation. You know, you kind of don't want me coming here at 80 and then relying on your health service, do you? Really? You know, you'd rather me when I was a bit more productive. So when do you want me? Do we? Do, yeah, do you want me? <laughs> totally valid. Get rid of the idiot. Exactly. I'm with you, madam. Yeah, yeah bugger off. Yeah, okay. No, that's perfectly reasonable as well. You may not want me at all for all I know. And you, 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 know, you tell me. I'm, 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 look on me. I'm, a very, I'm not going away. I like it here. But anyway, you're welcome to tell me. I'll just ignore you as well. But um, seriously, I mean, you... Because if you, you know, if you, do you, I notice in your demographics, you tend to lose a lot of people from sort of 25 to about 35 who go off for work and so on. They tend to come back, buy a house and have kids. Beautiful place to live, this part of the world. But if you, if you know, why I, I, I left Griffith at 18. Uh, why did I leave Griffith? Because everyone should. Um, <laughs> and a um, bit different to Gosford though, isn't it? With all due respect to poor old Griffith. I mean, my dad was a, my dad is a doctor down there, as I mentioned. He was the only legal drug dealer within about 100 miles. <laughs> and, um, and basically, you know, kind of, I, I said, the day I left Griffith to go to university, I said, I'll be back, you know, I'll come back as a lawyer or a, huh, I thought it was me, a lawyer or a businessman or something or another. And I had about, I think I had about three hours in Sydney after poor old Griffith wasn't really getting a look in again. To start with, Griffith only had Resh. I didn't know other beer, other beer existed other than Resh's. So I found this wonderful world called Tui's Old, bloody fantastic. <laughs> that was the end of me. So um, Griffith's now a, a rare visit. Um, but the issue is Gosford isn't Griffith, it's got a whole bunch of amenities. So, so do you want those younger people? Because you know, if, you, if you wanted me to come here and start a business, I started a business in Sydney in a one room serviced office, I employ several hundred people, create huge amounts of tax, you know, rent a lot of office space, you know, blah, 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 pay a lot of people a lot of money, uh, a lot of younger Australians a lot of money, and I guess they spend it on beer, I guess. Um, but you know, all that sort of good stuff. Do you, do you, do you want that person? Now what that person wants is that person you know, does want part of your plans for your modernised city centre, you know, does want really first class office space. He does, he or she, particularly she this day and age, probably does want to stroll over the, world, over the road to your beautiful waterfront plans and, and get a cafe latte and, and a, a bit of grilled fish and salad. Probably doesn't want a hamburger and chips. So you know, the, these, these, are, these are community issues. Or are you happy for people to leave and, and come back later on? I, I don't know. 
It's not my decision. You know, I'm, <laughs> you're stuck with me later in life. Uh, the only good thing is at least I can probably, probably pay, my own, pay my own way a little. But all of these issues, if your population gets too old, it's a threat to you. So keeping, you know, is that, is that a community conversation? Or do we just accept the fact, I mean, Griffith kind of accepts we're going to leave and probably never come back. Uh, is, you know, what can you do about that? So Griffith, one of the things it's done, of course, in its wine industry, so many bright kids at my school went off and got a wine degree and went back and they're now heading up at Williams or Miranda's or, you know, whatever it may be. And that's one strategy Griffith had to get young people back into that community, young, vibrant people. Interesting stuff. In Griffith, when the airline threatened to stop running, uh, Griffith Council said, look, bugger that, we'll subsidise the damn thing if necessary. You know, we're not, not having an airline. It's part of the death of our community. All of these issues are community conversations. So that, that's, what, that's what rather interests me for you. Um, I, d I don't know the answers. All I know is that as a community, I think you're going to struggle to be a country town um, with, you know, I including Wyong and so on, because I certainly think you're going to grow at, you know, around 2%. And so certainly, you know, your numbers are biggest. Maybe Wyong's got more spare land than you have and maybe it grows a bit faster. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't have the... You, the facts are... Talk to your council. The facts are easy to ascertain. Um, but the issues are there in front of you. You know, what is the impact on the environment? You know, I do notice, um, uh, and I can only give you micro real examples in your community, I, I watched with fascination that when I bought at North of Oak, I got approached by other people in North of Oak who said, listen, Paul... Uh, we know you've got, um, I've got a thing called the Clitheroe Foundation. Oh, by the way, thanks to the council, I, 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 get paid a, uh, I get paid a fee for talks like this. That fee goes to the Clitheroe Foundation. The Clitheroe Foundation supports the medical research and the arts. And certainly when I'm living more in your community, uh, that's what I'm looking forward to doing with some of that money. Uh, for example, in Kirribilli, uh, we do a number of projects with the Ensemble Theatre. Why the Ensemble Theatre? They're 75 metres down the road, they're part of my community. So I like participating in my community. In Avoca, I can help the North Avoca Surf Club. Why? It's part of my community. And one of the advantages of getting some of us um, people you may not really want, and I kind of half agree with that, but um, there was a bit of a ruckus apparently some years ago with the North Avoca Surf Club. This is community. They wanted to get a liquor licence. And some of the uh, people like me, who probably maybe you don't want, who come up on weekends and clog up your roads, uh, said, listen, guys, we can either argue about this in court, but, but you know, wh why do you want the liquor licence? And this is, this is before I lived there, by the way. I'm relating a second hand. Apparently what was said is the club said, well, look, you know, we've got nippers to support, we've got this and that, and half a dozen people on the beach said, how much do you need? And they said, you know, we need a hundred and something thousand. And they said, fine, divide between the six of us, we'll give you a check every year. So when I turned up, I got roped into that, and there's now seven of us. Um, and, that, you know, it's not a bad community outcome, because I don't think other residents of North of Oak who might not be in a position for that, that, that or maybe you're angry about it, I don't really know. But it just seemed to me that community conversation, you need the money, we love the nippers, we'll basically put in the money to make that happen. And I came in very second hand and, and happily give my, uh, give my money to North of Oka Surf Club each year. It, right or wrong, it's a community conversation. Certainly better than going to court. Let me give you the drum. I think it just becomes a really destructive community conversation. So the community you want's in your hands. Your challenge tonight is what do you want? You know, do you do you want to try and ban people like me? Do you uh, do you want or maybe maybe do you want me here more often? I don't know, because um, if I am here more often, I am going to clog up the road to Terrigal. That's going to put your infrastructure under pressure. Do you want to spend money on infrastructure, or would you rather uh, you know a, a new medical facility? I I can't answer those issues for you, but all I can tell you is I'm really grateful you're here tonight because I don't see other councils doing this, by the way. And so I was actually, I wasn't excited, I was, you know, I was really pleased to be invited along with some, some, some other, other folk who'd been along, such as Carl, for example. And I said to, when I was asked to come along, I said, wow, this is really quite a stimulating idea. Because the trouble with listening to people is you're actually going to hear things you don't like. But I think that's part of a community conversation, is I think if there's something you don't like, you don't like me, you don't like my talk, that's absolutely fine. And in a democracy, you're more than politely to you know, politely tell me, look, I really thought it was a bunch of crap, and that's fine. Um, you know, I, that, that's, that's a community, but there's no point telling, look, that's a bunch of crap, and then going out and buying a gun and shooting me. You know, that, that's not really how, you know, I, I think we need to be able to say, look, I don't like your city idea, with all due respect. Appreciate the work you're putting in, I don't agree with it. As for redeveloping the waterfront, look, I, the reason I don't like that is going to bring a whole bunch of knuckleheads like Clitheroe and his wife here, and we don't want that sort of people. That, that's fine as well, yeah, that's fine as well. But at least you've got an opinion, and that, that I think is what tonight is, is all about, is sharing opinions. Now, I'd be a little remiss, though, I've had a few people on the way inside, Paul, you've got to say a few words about our money. 
Uh, you might have seen me on today's show this morning rabbiting, have oh, you seen Australians are buying American properties over the internet? Like, how stupid are we? Um, seriously, no, they, 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 there was a thing on uh, um, 60 Minutes about it recently. And uh, buying, you know, and, you know if, you go, I had a look, if you go on the internet, you'll find you can buy any number of American properties for around about $30,000, usually on the edge of Detroit. One of my clients did this without telling me, which was handy, and I bought two of them for $32,000 each. And, um, was saying $32,000 each, I'm going to get $1,000 a month rent. Uh, that uh, means in 30 months I'll pay the property off and I'll get $1,000 a month for the rest of my life. And I'm going, guess what? Sounds too good to be true. Guess what really happened? Didn't get a single rent check. Flew to Detroit to find out what was going on. Never, never been to Detroit in his life, didn't know where it was. Flew to Detroit, went to the American agent he'd appointed to manage his two properties and he said, where's my rent? And the agent said, I'm not getting any. And he said, well, go and get it. He said, you go and get it. What do you mean? So he said, no, hold, hold, hold. You need a armoured vehicle, two security guards, a bulletproof vest and a shotgun. And then you could probably park outside without being killed. And he went, you're kidding. Anyway, he did hire a security guard, not an armour-plated van, drove past, very quickly realised why he was not going to get rent now or ever, sold the two properties for 50% of what he paid for them and licked his wounds. See, he thought it was cheap. Aren't we funny people? It's... Uh, you know, you can buy properties in Miami for as low as $14,000 at the moment. You can buy them on the internet for $5,000. If you deal with one of these property selling seminars, what they do is they buy them for $5,000 on the internet and sell them to you for $30,000. Guess who's making money here? If you want to make money out of buying property in America, don't buy the stuff, sell it to someone else. You know, you, that, that is a way to make money out of selling property in America. People are, people are crackers. So basically the, the reason that financial literacy is an issue for a Gosford community and all communities is that and one of the reasons that I've spent the last six years chairing the federal, both the previous government and this government, it's a, I have a bipartisan support, and we're now teaching kids from kindergarten to year 10, money skills and so on, and it's not very hard to do. We do it in maths, English and science. For those of you who are teachers, it's, we've only, you might have seen Julia Gillard, uh, uh, gave, when I say me, not me, gave the government body I chair another $10 million uh, just recently to train another 3,000 teachers. We've got some 60,000 teachers to train, but it'll roll out over the next two years. It's not interfering with reading, writing, arithmetic. All we're doing is compound interest. I got taught mummy rabbit meets daddy rabbit. What happens? Millions of the buggers, pretty simple. What we're doing now is we're going, daddy's got a credit card and he's taken a cash advance of $1,000 at 21%. How stuffed will he be in three years? Um, and the kids, the kids are kind of getting this. Uh, or mummy and daddy, or mummy or daddy, are putting extra $20 a week into the mortgage. How much better off will they be in 20 years? So all we're doing is we're not changing reading, writing, arithmetic. You'll notice your, your ch grandchildren, uh, in time to come, with their spelling list, they might have koala, wombat, and compound interest. <laughs> Why? Because most people don't participate in our financial system, not because of mathematics. Most people don't participate because my industry specialises in making it incomprehensible pre, post, undeducted, concessional, frank dividends. We do well, don't we? It's a great way of protecting our fees, by the way, as confused living daylights out of you. Superannuation. Anyone here find superannuation nice and simple? No, you probably need to pay someone to find out about it. Brilliant for my industry, isn't it? Not good for consumers. So basically, we need to give people the English skills and the mathematical skills. But the thing I will say to the age group, uh, mainly in this, in this audience like me, is that where I am sick and tired of us getting done over with money and I just don't know how, how many more times I can just, you know, I keep banging my head, is that the fact of the matter is if you're looking at an investment, I want you to go to the major banks and look at, say, their one or two year term deposit rate, which at the moment will be about seven-ish percent. Any investment you see, let's call that effectively the risk-free rate of return, any investment you see offering more than that will have commensurately higher risk, categorically, black and white. Look, I can stand at Avoca Beach and do a King Canute. The tide shall not come in. I'm going to get rolled over like King Canute. We need, particularly for those of you in retirement with a bit of money, you need to look at the risk-free rate of return. And I don't care who the knucklehead is. If some knucklehead promises you a higher rate than that, now if this person says, I can get you a few percent more with more risk, I think you're probably talking to someone who's honest. But the second, it is no more risk and it is secure, run for your life. You are being King Canute. 